20, and I know we're going to do it. I'm incredibly thankful that you're here. Where was the food? Thank you. I know you can't turn your head up there, but you're going to stand right in front of me. <laughs> Thank you for your leadership. I have a quick brag on Representative Goodwin. I called her on budget day, actual budget day. And um, I was asking her about a bill that was in her committee, and she goes, Julia, I'm a little busy. It's budget day. She's super, very kind. She's like, Can I call you tomorrow? She actually did it. She called me the next day, and eventually the, the bill got passed out of committee. And thank you. Thank you for, for your leadership on that. Um, I want to take a moment because I see so many new faces, and I want to share with you who I am, who this woman is standing in front of you. Um, I think you have to go back a few years, maybe even 30 years, to get the full story, maybe even beyond that. But I want to start when I was a 17 year old girl because I think that informs a lot of the reason why I'm running and it informs a lot of the sensitivities that I'll have in this role. When I was 17 years old, starting my senior year of high school, I dropped out of high school. I ran away from home, and about three months into that stint of being a runaway, I got pregnant. And that was my second or third time to run away from home. Um, but the second time, or uh, three months in, I got pregnant. I'm gonna tell you, it was the, the biggest wake-up call for me ever. Uh, so I went home, and as many of y'all can imagine, going to see a mother when you're pregnant and 17 and had been a runaway was one of the scariest experiences of my life. And I'm so grateful. My mom actually said, Julie, I will do whatever I can to help you, but you've got to go back to school. And so back to school I went. And I want you to know, this is a single mom who was raising four kids on a, a public teacher's salary. And in 1987, 1988, 1989, we were living below the federal poverty limit. So I went back to school, senior year, gave birth to my daughter one week after graduation. And I want to tell you something. We didn't have insurance in my family. I was a Medicaid mom. And I'm going to tell you why I favor Medicare for all. It's a great equalizer. It's a great equalizer. I want to share with you what it was like being a 17-year-old giving birth as a Medicaid mom in Texas at Parkland Hospital, laboring in a room with about 15 other moms who were laboring. Moaning. I remember going into that room, getting built into that room on the bed, and I was terrified. All the noise, all the pain. It was one of the scariest experiences, second to seeing my mom after being a runaway, that I never experienced in my life. Um, but I had a very healthy uh, pregnancy and a very healthy delivery, and I'm grateful that that was there for me. But I knew I also wanted to get a college education, so I went to college. And I didn't have a college fund in my family. There was a college fund in my family. I got by on Pell Grants and earned income tax credits. And I am grateful. For those of y'all who were around in 1990, thank you for paying your taxes. <laughs> because you paid your taxes, this story turns out very differently than if it was just a young girl who was 17 and getting pregnant. Because we know the outcome of a 17-year-old girl who gets pregnant is typically one where she has another kid and is working a minimum wage job. Not nearly enough to feed a family. So thank you. Um, I decided that I wanted to continue my education and apply to NYU School of Law, and I did not get in. And so I applied to UT School of Law, and I did get in. And I'm really, really grateful.
help flip the seat and we will win. Y'all, in 2018, I put 45,000 miles on my car. I expect 